All right, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Upsurge Contenders League here on this beautiful Thursday night. My name is Orbital. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna be bringing you this broadcast here from some of the fantastic, uh, fantastic areas, and I am joined here by the ever so lovely Night Star, I believe. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a little bit of a wild start here to uh, get us to this point, but we're finally actually here. So, you know, that that's a step. Oh, absolutely. And again, we are into Pick the Bands already. But again, these two teams, we do have Reprise Esports and MSU Summer Squad. Both these squads battling to still try and make it into playoffs with only two weeks left. So every series does count. We are into the Pick a Band phase here. Katarina, Olaf, and Set all taken off the table by Reprise Esports, who will be on blue side to start this series off. On the other side, we do see the Senna, Grays, and Ezreal taken off the board, and the Varus automatically picked up, as that is pretty much one of the top tier ADCs left on the board. Yeah, it is a very prized pick here. The next one would be something like an Aphilios or a Callista for the side of MSU, um, if we're looking at global uh, meta, but... Um, for our AD carry here tonight, so we might see something like uh, Caitlyn to try and match, or something like the Sivir pick just to go ahead and scale into the uh, later portions of the game. Um, so that will be the lock-in, uh, which is interesting because we <laughs> don't necessarily see a lot of Sivir, but with how the meta has been very revolved around um mid to late game team fights silver definitely fits that role yep absolutely again the chase down potential is very much there silver is one of the best with the on the hunt with the chase potential not only that if that is a predator or not a predator a poke varus she vastly out damages him towards that mid to late game which is honestly where silver shines so again picking up a very nice adc for themselves it does show that they are not really planning to win that bottom lane it is very much going to be uh, playing for that mid to late game. It's Trundle and Lee Sin to match. So, so far we do have ADC and jungles taken off the board. So both teams wanting to keep this first pick phase uh, even in mirror. Yeah, and I mean, it's a pretty generic opening uh, for both of these teams trying to hide those solo lane picks. Um, you can definitely look to lock in uh, a blind pick or maybe even a flex pick solo laner here. Uh, for reprise, it does okay. It does look like it's going to be Tom Kench, which does open uh, up a lot of possibilities here. So MSU they lock in the Yumi. This is a pretty free lane in the bot lane. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, going with the Chandra's support, yeah, the Yumi will be able to scale very easily through this game, and it really just comes down to Tom Kench being really aggressive in moving around the map yeah the yumi is also one of the prize supports pretty much a tier right now s tier if you want to call it we are into that second round ban phase here so rumble and mordecai's are both taken off the table again these are high priority ap champions that can be played mid and top so both squads say we don't want to deal with those power picks we'll take them off the board yeah and rumble just provides so much mid game punch that uh for the side of msu it's just really hard to deal with if you get ulted uh trying to contest for these objectives like the rift herald or uh the dragon and camille will be the last man definitely targeted uh in that regard over at nick nicks yeah and so taking a look at these bands so far it definitely feels like they're not really looking towards any direct, you know, power picks. They're not trying to ban out a composition per se. It's just like those high priority meta picks that they want off the table. So what do you think is going to come through here for those solo lanes? Yeah, for the solo lanes, most likely it'll be a blind pick top lane uh, or, well, actually, I would assume maybe it's something like a mid lane pick here. Syndra mm -hmm. is still up and available. She is the strongest mid laner. Um, still in the meta and she's just such a great blind pick but for msu they could also opt for something like alessandra instead they lock in the victor knowing that um the other side platypus has played quite a few games of victor in this league so 
uh, just trying to deny it away from him, maybe put him in an uncomfortable matchup, but it still leaves up the Syndra available. So I'm not sure how I like about uh, how I like this second phase, but Victor does scale well with the composition that MSU has to offer. All right, well, there we go. Taking a look, Wukong is locked in for that top lane. We'll see how that one works. But again, Victor, uh, to a lot of mid laners, definitely feels like an underpowering pick. Uh, again, if you blind pick it, it feels like there's a lot more on the table that can counter it. Like you said, the Syndra. Uh, now that the Wukong's picked, are we looking at MSU to try and throw in a heavy hitting top laner? Or do you think they're going to go for maybe a tank to try and keep this kind of team fight heavy composition going? They can definitely opt for a pick like Orn or the Malphite to just provide insane amounts of team fights. Um, however, at the same time, Sun has played a large variety of champions. Uh, he's only played the only champion he's played more than once in this league is the Darius, and that's <laughs> what he's going to lock in. So he's going for a heavy abuse top lane. Yeah, Darius is locked in. Going to be a very scary option coming out here. I'm very excited to see what they can pull off here. Uh, now that the compositions are locked in, what lane are you looking at to really be the high priority? Uh, for Reprise, it has to be trying to slow down this Darius pick. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it will end up revolving around the Darius in the fact that you have a Trundle who really just walks up there, throws a pillar, and Wukong's kind of out of outplay options. Uh, but for Lee Sid, because you have Varus Tom Kench in the bot lane, you can't really interact with that lane a whole lot until you hit that level 6 onto the Varus, and even then, it can be a little bit of a struggle given the fact that it is a sivir so you mm. can just spell shield and walk away uh, the other option would then be trying to make a player around mid lane at level six for the oriana um, but i do just i struggle to see where the engage conditions are for reprise it really just has to come from the wukong getting ahead so that he can just jump in with the oriana ball and start fights yeah that's one of the interesting things when you hedge your bets on kind of this all or nothing composition right you kind of throw everything to the wind you say okay let's go for it and it and it really becomes one dimensional right it, it becomes very easy to see where they're going to try and place their bets as we do get into the actual pick ban phase here uh, we will have that done very shortly for you but you already pointed out yes that top lane very much the high priority here i want to also get your opinion on this mid lane Again, the victor was blind pick, so that's the lane that MSU decided to give up, and yet Reprise Esports decided to go for a relatively safe pick, Oriana, who many consider to be around high B tier and not exactly a hard counter to the victor. Uh, what do you think of this pick? Yeah, it really is m much more of a handshake here with the fact that they picked the Oriana. They're just looking to just have both of these mid laner scale. The Oriana, of course, will have more impact as far as hitting those big uh, shock waves or hitting large amounts of CC. The issue is Victor, with this composition, there's so much freedom in being able to reposition. And I mean that in a way that uh, these champs don't have necessarily jumps, but mm -hmm. the amount of move speed you're going to be having with the Victor Q, with the Yumi heal, with the Sivir ultimate, it's such a mobile composition uh, mm -hmm. for MSU, even though they don't have jumps. Yeah, that is, you know, a very fair point that both these squads are going to have to look out for. And now taking a look at that bottom lane, we touched on it a little bit because it was the first thing, right, in that draft phase. But now with the rest of the squads being locked in, I mean, do you think this Varus and Tom Kench have a little bit easier time knowing that Lee Sin is going to be uh, following up behind the Wukong and Oriana? Or do you still favor the Sivir uh, Yumi to have some potential to kind of push them out of lane? Uh, I definitely favor the Yumi Sivir in the lane phase, given the fact that it's just... This was the original Cancer's duo. <laughs> <laughs> when they had... Oh, it was like a huge slow on the Yumi. Q, 
uh, mm -hmm. when she first came out. So you hit the Yumi Q and then you hit the Sivir uh, Boomerang Blade every single time and there is no way to outplay it. We're, we're giving the throwback to that uh, those times. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing with Sivir is the fact that she is going to get better access range than the Varus because of the Ricochet Blades. Now the Varus has to deal with a Yumi uh, on top of a Trundle or a Darius. Whereas on the flip side, Sivir, assuming that the Darius is going to be winning topside, is going to be dealing with a much weaker Wukong. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that is the point is, you know, with all this locked in, you know, you do have to figure out and hedge your bets on where these players are going to go and who is going to be on the weaker side, who's going to be on the stronger side for sure. We're going to have to keep track of that Wu Kong and see if Trundle gives that respect or gives that attention to the top side to get sunlight moving uh, on that Darius. So final question coming in here as we do take down towards that spectator delay for you, Nightstar. Uh, looking at these compositions, I know you favored the Sivir Yumi. Overall, as a composition, I mean, do uh, do MSU Summer Squad have an easier to execute composition? Or do you still think it's going to be a slightly uphill battle against uh, Reprise Esports here? So there are some components on the side of Reprise that are nice in the fact that you have a pretty easy to execute teamfight wombo combo in the mm. fact that you have the wukong r and the oriana r so you press those two r buttons and you definitely have the potential to just win fights but the concern i see is the fact that you have a darius and there's so much win lane power on the side of msu that that will just snowball into the team fight and it's not like their team fight isn't that bad either with all the move speed that they're going to be getting from the Sivir and the Yumi. So I, I definitely like the side of MSU and the fact that they have the option of winning lane, but also a pretty decent scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good to hear. We'll have to see if they can make it work, but we will be going to a very short commercial break as we have the two teams load on the rip to uh, preserve competitive integrity we'll say, and make sure all the teams are set to go for the upcoming battle, because again, this is game number one. This sets the tempo for the entirety of the series, so don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss game number one between Reprise Esports and MSU Summer Squad. Don't touch that browser. A vision. a vision of quality, a vision of uniformity. We took the time to create something familiar, yet refreshing. Something with a bit of change. Designed to fit any brand's unique vision.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game number one between Reprise Esports and MSU Summer Squad. On the blue side, we do have Reprise Esports, Nick Nicks in the top lane, uh, Arturnix in that jungle, Platypus in the mid lane, Project Panda at ADC, and Hubba Hubba at support. And over on the red side, we have MSU Summer Squad. Sunlight in the top lane for Giveable in the jungle. Best Katarina China in the mid lane. Puffy Warrior in the marksman role. And Death Sentence in the support role. Yeah, with a name like that, it's surprising that he is playing an Enchanter. You would expect that uh, Thresh coming out. But again, we are going to get the cat. No flails, no hooks or anything coming out this time. As we did see the ward battle going over in favor of our Turnix. Yeah, and it really just comes down to the fact that it's just such an easy-to-scale lane in that bottom lane whenever you're laning against a Tom Kench. He doesn't necessarily put any sort of pressure onto Enchantress supports, uh, and Enchantress supports are the best if you're looking at the long game. Of course, if you're looking at mid game or you need some engage power, you, you definitely want those uh, your Nautiluses, the Threshes, to just be able to make plays. But here, uh, I was actually surprised they didn't opt for a Morgana pick because of the fact that it would have been just super safe against the Lee Sin as well. If the Lee Sin just jumps in the back line, you, you throw in a black shield and uh, watch him suffer. <laughs> that would be the most painful thing I think I've ever imagined is, you know, black shield always has this way of just really messing with people. So we'll see what they can do and how they decide to play this lane out as, again, the laning phase does kick off and Sunlight already pushing the wave under tower trying to get that early advantage in the top side yeah and it's a bit of a sketchy situation with where the wave is he does need to either look to shove that wave back out or um nick nicks could definitely look to try and hold this wave as much as possible to force sunlight in a poor position yeah, he's going to be looking for that as best he can as the junglers do traverse to the top side of the jungles. Uh, we do see Lee Sin trying to make his way over to get a gank off, but again, that is a warded side. So Arternix is just going to lose a little bit of time as he now has to walk back towards his own jungle. Uh, actually, yeah, it looks but... like he is going to try and invade here. Yeah, it looks like he's going for the invade. Um, at the very least, though, we do see he him putting that ward in that tri bush to add that vision for Nick Nixon. We've got a skirmish. Yeah, forgivable. Tries to smite and get a little bit of health back. So the trade is a little bit even. Do you see the roam around by Platypus? So the collapse is better out of reprise esports as they are able to push forgivable off of his red buff. And that might just be a win for the Lee Sin. Yeah, and it's a really good deny pick, being able to just play around their jungler. And this composition pretty much comes down to being able to play around uh, this Lee Sin er in that early game, allowing him to invade the Trundle, make his life miserable. Um, because later on, the Trundle is just going to be more useful than the Lee Sin. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Lee Sin only really good in the early to mid stages. So you can already see him trying to posture and make some moves. And, you know, so far this game is fairly quiet between these two junglers. You expect the jungles to constantly be rotating and moving. And we do see the moves. It's just, you know, lanes have been fairly quiet and, you know, no force ganks have come out. Yeah, and for Forgivable, it really is just him trying to hold down the fort to a certain degree, make sure he's able to get through uh, the earliest portions of the game, get that first or second clear, uh, all fine and dandy, and then he can look to really try and just run into these lanes, throw down the pillar, and uh, provide that gank support for some of these lanes. Yeah, we do see the Krugs getting taken away a little bit by Forgivable as the dragon is coming up soon. That will be an Infernal Drake to start it off, so that won't be any Infernal Soul, which we all love to see, especially with comps like this. Uh, but we won't be seeing any Infernal Soul. It will have to be a different dragon now. The question I want to pose to you is, you know, looking at this position, both Lee Sin and Trundle have the opportunity to be able to do an early Drake. Do you, especially with the warding vision, I mean, Forgivable seems like a shoe in but do you think uh, Artanix is going to try and get a steal, or, or do you think anything's going to happen there? 
Uh, I think it's really difficult for him to force the dragon, unless if it's some uh, sneaky corner, like just going over this dragon wall and starting it out. That's really the only possibility, because uh, this bot lane should be b in pretty firm control for MSU, as long as uh, the mana management is solid from the side of uh, the Sivir, you're always going to be able to just clear out the wave whenever your trundle requires you to uh, throw pressure a uh, wave priority in that bot lane but yeah big butt there <laughs> but <laughs> uh, i mean it, the lee sin does out skirmish the trundle at this point so he just goes ahead and says hey, well i don't really care i have the wave in the bot side the trundle doesn't look very interested in trying to stop me so uh this is mine yeah, and, and they secure themselves an extra 4% AD and AP. I mean, that's always useful uh, with something like an Orianna plus a Varus, even though Varus is going on hit. Having that extra little damage on a Piercing Arrow or uh, or the E from Varus is going to, you know, help a little bit in getting the damage down, especially onto something like the Yumi, you know, taking away her healing potential. We do see a little bit of a rotate up as both junglers are rotating to try and help, and they both meet and immediately say no more. So a lot of respect being handed down between these two junglers. Yeah, they, they kind of just wave to each other, say uh, greetings, <laughs> give their greetings out and uh, be on their merry way. <laughs> uh, that's really just it. And uh, so a lot of the prediction on what I had for this early game, where it just comes down to trying to snowball or s shut down this Darius, uh, the only thing we've seen is uh a turnix just going up top side throw down a lot of vision and uh make sure the wukong can just uh, farm safely without coming under fire from this trundle roam into his lane yeah that is always up there and i mean such a quiet early game this has been right uh mm -hmm. for seven and a half minutes the only thing that's really been taken is that rift trail no lanes have even burned summoners uh, except for the teleports, right? Like, no offensive summoners, no team has really tried anything. I mean, it looks like both these squads are saying that they're content farming, but who really benefits in this elongated laning phase? Like, is it Reprise Esports or is it, is it MSU Summer Squad? Yeah, I think that if all thing go, everything goes really neutral um, and it holds, ooh, yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> again, he, he again it's just so easy. Yeah. I, I guess that's also the difficult part about all this. You know, you have these kinds of compositions. But going back to that, you know, again, we're seeing little things, but not enough to really warrant any excitement over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who really comes out on top in this extended laning phase and who is benefiting by pushing towards that mid to late game? Yeah. And I think that... Uh... Going back to what I was trying to say, if all things hold, it, it still is in favor of MSU, right? Because the Trundle is still going to have impact over the Lee Sin. Um, the Victor is has probably the same amount of power as the Orianna. Provides a little more raw damage, but uh, lacks the necessary CC that Orianna can bring. Uh, however, in this bottom side, you have the Sivir who is going to pump out more damage in comparison to the Varus at four items, uh, even at three. And then you have a Yumi that's going to be infinitely more useful than this Tom Kench in a straight-up teamfight. The Tom Kench does have its... Oh, okay. This could be it. Yeah, that's a little bit of a play right there, trying to dance their way. Uh, but we do see on the top side, Nick Nick's also getting jumped on a sunlight, taking the center oh, baby. spot. That's going to be the cyclone coming out. But again, no dice anywhere. That's a flash forward and the kill, the decimation from sunlight. Stylish first blood for him. And a big flash play coming out from sunlight, showing that little, uh, just absolutely annihilating Nick Nicks here. And we're, we look at the CS as well. He is up a full 30 CS here. So even though Sunlight hasn't gotten that many ganks, hasn't been ganked himself either, 
if all things hold neutral, Sunlight just wins the lane because he is Darius playing into a Wukong. And that spells really bad trouble. Again, we pointed out in the early game, right? Nick Nix is one of the most important champions. We have to make sure that, you know, keep track of his uh, of his ability to really fight these team fights and start the Wombo combos off. So keeping an eye on that top lane will definitely be very important moving forward. Uh, we take stock of the rest of the lanes. Again, still very quiet bot lane, seeing no action except a high CS differential for the Varus. And so again, both teams playing relatively safe oh. in the first game. Top lane, we do see two Cutlasses being burned, but again, that's two top laners. They're going to try and farm it right back up. Yeah, and uh, I mean, this Darius is just such in control of this lane. It has the Ninja Tabby built up as well. I think that's a really big issue. Ooh, okay. Oh. All right, we see um, a fight on multiple fronts here. That's going to be a flash over the wall as Eternix and Forgivable are dancing around this dragon pit, but that's going to be the final chapter being tossed out. Hubba Hubba is able to get that kill oh. as a dragon. Singles out our Eternix that gives the kill over to Forgivable. And that is such a ridiculous way to try and get a couple kills as Platypus oh, oh. now, without flash, getting chased down by Forgivable no, oh. Pillar, able to keep him away. And that is just going to be the rundown. One more auto attack will do it forgivable taking his second kill of the game and that that's really unfortunate that's uh some of the power provided once you get some of that scaling in the trundle just runs down everybody with this yumi especially in these scattered fights and uh that's also just kind of everybody on the side of msu if things go south on the initial engage from uh, reprise, they have no way out. They can't just disengage from this composition because of the amount of move speed provided by the Yumi, provided by the Sivir Ultimate, and just the sheer amount of chase potential from Victor and Trundle. Yeah, we do see the second Drake going very low, and it's ah! stolen away! A Turnix once again showing off the Lisa mechanics. He will pay with his life. But they are now on two dragon points. So very, very nice sacrifice, if I do say so myself. Yeah, a solid trade there. Um, and I mean, for the side of MSU, you're still relatively happy with that trade. So both teams uh, pleased to a degree with that trade because of the fact that you're losing Ocean Dragon, which is probably the worst standalone dragon. Uh at this point in the game, because the regen isn't that useful, Nick Nix is in trouble. That, yeah. That's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's a little bit behind right now. I don't think he's ever going to be contesting top at all right now. And again, constantly burning this ultimate out of a Wukong means that the team fights will be that much easier. So I really like this pressure that Sunlight is putting on on this top side. It's definitely a clinic by him and i don't think he's going to get that champion next round oh yeah, but here but... we go we do see the top lane jump but this is a three-man oh, jump oh, in oh. sunlight oh. looking like he wants to hang on to this win he is running away but again this is sunlight he doesn't care too much victor? Shield goes out and victor throws down the vector storm oh, the the field. we do see trundle dancing trying to get it he knows that uh that he's right there and they're gonna try and go out he does not land as the mid lane is now under pressure. Oh. Apprehend oh. is going to keep him stuck there. That's going to be the kill. And then bottom lane, immediately a second as MSU are starting to come online with a little bit of life and starting to push the tempo. Yeah, and it really just comes from Oriana being just a little bit too far out there. And uh, Sunlight just being in the area, absolutely uh, capitalizing on that mistake. And in the bottom side, it... Again, it comes down to Yumi, Trundle, Sivir. You can't just disengage from that as a, a Tom Kench. And we see the Tom Kench pick coming in here. And sure, the duo of Tom Kench and Barris is really hard to punish. But it doesn't change the fact that this, uh, this duo is very immobile. Yeah, but here we go. In goes the hold, and that's going to be a flash out from Puffy Warrior. Uh, no on the hunt, so that does mean he has to burn the summoner spell. But again, keeping himself safe from very simple ganks coming out here. Again, Arternix tried that lane gank, and at least they got a flash out of it. 
you know, they're able to at least burn a summoner from that Sivir, but Sivir still has uh, the barrier. The really nice part is the fact that uh, Eternix didn't have his ultimate for that fight, and they were still able to burn that Flash Summoner. So he can really just come straight back to the bottom lane very, very quickly and try and pull off that gank once again. Um, however, uh, he really doesn't want to try and touch this top lane, to be really <laughs> honest here. Uh, it, it's looking really dire. I, I wouldn't want to touch that either as he's actually oh, getting no. found out in his own jungle. He dances <laughs> over the side. He might get it. The burn is there, but it's only a four bleed tick. So not enough to actually kill our Turnix. But if that were a five tick, I think that would have been a kill. Yeah, the five stack definitely would have been really lethal here. Oh, oh that damage. Oh, gosh. And Victor uh, <laughs> now outputting quite a bit of raw damage as well. And this is what we were worried about again. Platypus in this mid lane playing Oriana, it's a safe pick, but you can't really punish the Victor pick if you play like this. Yeah, and the Oriana pick, while it provides you a lot of team fight power, in the 1v1, Victor should almost always win. Uh, mm. it, just because of the fact that his kit is pretty much raw damage. And uh, for Oriana, it's about being a little bit of utility, a little bit of damage, and a lot of CC. Um, so it's about having the complete kit. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't matter if you have no HP to deal, uh, to actually utilize all that utility. Yeah, not only that, I mean, we're seeing Sunlight literally play in the middle of the lanes he just doesn't care anymore he was a uh, i believe he was um you know a little bit of a scouter dancing in between the top two towers and again he is holding this lane hostage 30 cs up two kills in i mean we look at the mm -hmm. gold difference you're sitting at almost a 1.5k difference almost an item uh or half a half an item there so very big win for him now uh, we do no see the dragon coming up here Yep. Uh, possibly going to be someone away. Again, this would be third Drake for the side of Reprise Esports if they're able to pick this up. And it's very, very dangerous. They don't have the Darius. So this is a four on four fight. We're looking for that hard engage. Yeah, he is running straight down here. And uh, for the side of Reprise, they're trying to utilize this time to throw their Wukong up in the top side, maybe get that tower. But a Turnix, he could just pull off another superhuman play here. He did it once. He's going to try and do it again. Trying to look close. He gets uh -oh. it just with the Sonic what? kick this time. <laughs> That's so rude. And Sunlight says, all right, we've had the Dragon stolen twice. I got to do something for my team. Uh, Demacian kill does not come through as auto attacks are flying fast and crazy. Oh! But there it is. Demacian justice at its finest. Sunlight able to claim one kill and one, ex uh, one assist. Very sorry. As the bottom lane tower now goes down. Absolutely dunks in that bottom lane. And you know, Sunlight is just molding with that play. He, he was like, all right, uh, I've had enough of this jungle shenanigans. I just have to go kill some people to vent my anger. And that's literally what he does as Platypus might be out a little bit too far, but has the GLP to disengage the situation. They do lose their mid lane tower and a pretty large chunk of damage onto that uh, second tower, but at least they hold um, that second tower and Again, they are now on to Soul Point. Yeah, and again, excuse my uh, low IQ. I was calling, I was calling Darius Demacian for some reason, and you know that is the most basic error of errors. So, uh, you you know I'm off my rocker there. But again, uh, Darius popping off three zero and one Trundle three zero and one as well. So this really seems to be MSU's game to lose at this point. Up about four K. Yes, it's not a lot, and yes, they're down three dragons, but it definitely feels like they're still in control of this game. Yeah, they definitely have control over these fights. Uh, and the one Mountain Dragon isn't going to change that. So even when we're coming into this soul, or even the next four soul dragon points available for the side of um, Reprise, they still don't win these fights. Also, with the build of Wukong, he's 
putting more priority on being able to win this 1v1. And that's just not what Wukong's role is in this composition. He cannot win the 1v1 right now. Oh, but they're going to try for a two-on-one as they do find the Sonic Kick. The combo is there along with the Cyclone. And the Guillotine Master himself falls. As it is going to be a shutdown picked up by Wukong. An extra little 400 gold in his pocket never hurts. But we'll see mm -hmm. if that's enough to really bring this squad to a fighting point. Yeah, and that's actually a really nice shutdown kill. Being able to get that onto the Wukong. It doesn't necessarily make up the entire gold difference as there's still uh, uh, 500 or 600 gold advantage for Darius. But hopefully he's able to get his Black Cleaver off of this buy, which he should be able to do. Um, and now we're looking at... He adds a little extra into the team fights now uh than he did before he's going to be able to provide that armor shred uh, allow the varus to do a little bit more damage allow the lee sin to have a little more impact and mm -hmm. really this lee sin that's the first impact play that he's had as far as getting kills go the other impact has been just stealing away dragons yeah and it's and it's hard enough to say that right because it's Lee Sin. He's stolen two dragons, and yes, he might not have had an impact on the lanes, but I mean, his global map pressure has always been on point. He has never allowed, uh, I think, a global objective to be taken without his consent kind of thing, right? Like, he has always been there to challenge it. He, and honestly, gotten two steals off, which I think are absolutely fantastic. You know, going into this, I mean, if they get that fourth dragon, that's going to give them a nice extra shield. I mean, do you think that's enough to really allow them to survive this onslaught of Victor, Darius, and Trundle? Uh, I think it gives them the option or the possibility to start winning team fights because then you know that your Wukong will be able to survive when he goes in with that ultimate. At least be able to channel off or get two channels of the ultimate off um, and also be able to just provide the ability for Platypus to get that ultimate down onto the Wukong as well. So the Wombo combo definitely will be uh, live. Oh, as we do see a fight oh, on the no. bottom oh. side again. Sunlight oh, no. has found the enemy team. And this one looks much more dire. Cyclone Ooh. knocks up four, but it looks like it's oh. not enough. Again, Death Sentence might have found her his death, but... So Wait. the Yuka 5 as in goes Nick Nick, but that just spells his doom! Oh. Down goes the fight as Sunlight is allowing these kills to go through. Best Katarina shows that he's just as strong on Victor as he collects two for himself, and that's a four for one in favor of MSU Summer Squad. Yeah, and they just... This time, they cannot lose the dragon to Lee Sin. Uh, it is literally impossible. <laughs> literally impossible. Um, as Platypus also doesn't decide to stick around to have a go at it. Um, and that's just a great team fight. Again, it shows how much power they have in this composition. They just weren't able to show it before. And on the flip side, sure, you have the combination of Wukong Oriana, and that should, if you look at those two champions, just win you fights. But you're also missing the part that Wukong didn't get to play the early game. Uh, he hasn't been able to really scale that well. And the same goes with the Oriana. Sure, the Oriana is um, farming quite well, but in comparison to what the Victor is able to provide, it's just worlds apart. Yeah, and that's something that they'll definitely have to look towards next game. Uh, you know, we don't like calling games as quickly as possible, right? Because I think there is still a chance for them to come back. It is UCL. <laughs> yeah, but not only that, I mean, you're looking at a Varus that's 0-2. He's not going the poke Varus, so his build path is actually quite expensive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, lethality items generally average around, I think, 24 to 2700. Do you see the bottom lane even a fight now? As You know, it's a little touch and go. But yeah, the, again, this is major carries not having the gold income that they really need. Yeah, and uh, I would like to see less of the on-hit Varus in my... This is like a personal take, but I, I think on-hit Varus has been a, a little bit 
overplayed and in a composition like this where you have two black cleaver users just go crit varus you're going to get the armor shred to allow yourself to do the damage and you also just want that extra range provided by something like the recurve bow to actually be able to auto targets against the msu squad but here we do see that it will most likely be that ginsu's rage blade and at two items sure you're going to be able to shred through the trundle and the darius a little bit better but it means that you're also in range of trundle darius yeah now the baron starts up and they immediately pull off as sunlight says let's go for oh. this fight they do find a little bit of a poke, but now Forgivable is in the middle of the entire team. But there it is. Very nice <laughs> Chaos Storm and a Shockwave oh. as a rebuttal. They're going to get a team fight. A team fight has one for one so far in this fight. And they're going to have to run as Hubba Hubba is very strong. So is Project, but oh, he gets stunned what? and shot down. Victor taking a huge chunk out of the Varus. And that immediately signals the end of the fight. So even though Reprise Esports are down that much, their damage output is massive right yeah, and that's one of the things they are able to take advantage of is these tight chokes because it means that you can't just force around the Wukong and the Lee Sin to get access to the Oriana Varus. Um, and you saw right there, sure, the Darius is in your face, but he can't he can't just walk around the Wukong ultimate, and they were able to pump out plenty of Varus damage in that regard. Now, for the side of MSU, it just really comes down to readjusting, okay, let's not fight in chokes. We'll fight around the Baron area. We'll fight around in slightly more open spaces where we can try and get around uh, this Wukong ultimate, or at least set up flanks. Mm hmm and so now looking with all these abilities on, as, I mean, we can't even talk about it now. Everything's kicking off. Uh, Best Cat Arena is now getting jumped on into the Cyclone, into the Blender, and Wait. straight into Platypus. Oh. There it is, a death okay. sentence. Your death is nigh. That's going to be a shutdown onto the Yumi. And all of a sudden, this is huge. <clears throat> this is huge. Because of the fact that uh, they can look for Baron. They shouldn't really look for Baron here. Um but you have the ability to set up for Mountain Soul. And while they should get the Baron for relatively free, <clears throat> the mm -hmm. issue then becomes if they decide to go for this dragon, uh, they will have expended quite a bit of mana and maybe a couple of a uh, little bit of health that it might make it oh. difficult. Oh my god. <laughs> They should just run Dragon. Run Dragon right now. Oh, they should. The Baron was stolen away by Forgivable. So tit for tat, eye for an eye. A steal for a steal comes out. As Sunlight now is looking like he wants to do some work. Gets a Q off and they have to dance right back. Again, Yumi is up so the heals are huge. But again, this... So scary would though, so they're funnel very dangerous. Oh, Katarina teleported in the back line. This is the fight that they want. Chaos Storm doing the damage <laughs> as that kick is there, but that's it. The deletion double kill for best Katarina. The Nox Noxian guillotine is gonna come out. Dragon is taken by the Sivir, and that's gonna be massive oh! flash in another kill. Sunlight <laughs> taking it to town now, oh. and a little bit of BM <laughs> to take the double kill. And would you know it off the back of a Baron Steel? comes a dragon in five for MSU Summer Squad. Yeah, and um, what's hard to do with the Mountain Dragon is being able to pull it out of the pit. That said, you should still look to pull it out of the pit whenever you're trying to do so. Uh, we saw it get punished once uh, by Eternix being able to actually access the dragon, even though... Uh, he had no business to and now here where sunlight just gets to walk in for free they've trapped themselves against the darius and this time uh they didn't they didn't uh coordinate well enough to provide that choke peel to pr uh, prevent the Darius from getting access to project panda and platypus and you just saw there a complete slaughter 
Yeah, such a massive win for the side of MSU uh, Summer Squad. I mean, coming away with the Baron as well as two inhibitors now, this means all the focus is on reprides to be able to hold this top lane, I feel, right? This is actually where having that on-hit Varus is very, very good because you're able to clear the waves very well. Uh, you're able to move as quickly as possible, you know, lay down the auto attacks pretty quickly. That's well and good. You're able to have some wave clear and then Oriana as well, still trying to build up. Uh, sitting on three items, Merlinomicon, Hexec, GLP, and Void Staff. So, you know, she is getting to a decent power point. Uh, but again, what can you do against Sunlight? I mean, how does Reprise Esports deal with this juggernaut of a top laner? It's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> but they're trying to do it. And, you know, the issue right now is the fact that the other threat, Bess, Katarina, China has quietly amassed a very large lead, has 300 CS to his name, almost has a death cap onto... Uh... Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we were just talking about it, but he gets shut down. That's the power that they want. But again, they leave the top lane open. Baron buff has worn off, so you're not going to get that you know immense push potential. But still, look at those minions piling into the base right now there is on wave clear duty as hard as possible yeah and it's a little bit difficult to break this top tower because again when you're running uh trying to crack the base it's not like you're trying to find flanks uh yeah. <laughs> so it makes it a lot easier for the wukong oriana combo to be executed and it really just comes down to either picking them off on the sides or being able to just flank with the fact that you do have super minions coming in from the mid lane uh, but most likely what we're gonna see is them just waiting for the next round of objectives so we have baron in two minutes and mountain dragon in 90 seconds yeah and i mean we're down five dragons i mean uh, MSU Summer Squad have definitely clawed their way back, but still, one little misstep, one little shakeup can mean the soul going over to the side of Reprise Esports. It means that they pretty much can close out this game, I feel. Or at least start, not close out, sorry. They are on the back foot. Be able to put themselves on even ground, right? They're able to start trying to pressure down that mid lane, knock down some of those extra towers that are still standing. I mean, their their tower count is 8-2 right now. Not exactly the prettiest. Yeah. But again, taking a look at these lanes and, and trying to keep stock, I mean, do they have that chance to take the dragon, do you think? Or, or do you think this is kind of a hopeless case still? It's uh, quite rough because of the fact that they have to deal with super minions in the mid lane and in the bottom lane. So they pretty much lose all the control around this dragon area, but they are going to get first access here. Uh, they are going to look to try and... In all right, they might be looking for a play. This could get quite dangerous, though. Yeah, that is something that we have to watch out for. As Forgivable is dancing through that mid lane, keeping the lane pressured up. And we actually see Victor put on split push duty because he's the only one with teleport. So that's a smart move. And my intent to make sure the uh, teleporter has that lane advantage, is constantly keeping pressure. So that will be a teleport versus teleport, depending if Platypus can get it off as well. Here we go. Teleport coming in from Platypus. And a double this teleport, actually, as they are throwing themselves into the fray. Cyclone lands on the three, changes the corruption as well. But that's going to be an immediate first out as Wukong is gone from this fight. And he is no longer for the world. Shockwave only lands on two. They're shredding through the health bars here. They are melting like hot butter. And the guillotine to section it off. That is going to be multiple kills as Sunlight is on a killing sweep pillar to stop Platypus from walking away. Double kill for the Sivir. And just like that game won going in favor of MSU Summer Squad. Yeah, and MSU Summer Squad don't even need that Mountain Dragon to finish this game. They're just that far ahead in these solo lane picks, and that just gives you so much space for that Sivir to operate, and that's a very clean finish from MSU Summer Squad. And I have to agree with you, that closing statement, you know, we were wondering because they were down three dragons, if they were going to feel confident enough to really push through and end this game. And I mean, I think they did. And and like you said, from start to finish, it definitely felt like MSU Summer Squad were in the lead, although they were down, you know, those three dragons. 
Yeah, and it really just came down to, sure, you get the three dragons, but our wallets are still so big, so large and in charge, that we can just walk to up to the next two dragons and just smack you with them. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah, and, and I feel it goes back to the draft phase, right? As the draft was coming out, you pointed out the bot lane was definitely going to go in favor of Puffy Warrior Death Sentence. And not only that, you know, the jungle and top side we were pointing out is very heavily uh, in favor of Sunlight. So, you know, do you think going into game number two, this draft is this draft format is going to say the same? Or what would you like to see different coming out of Reprise Esports? I, I think Reprise, they thought a little bit too much about the overall composition here and mm. having the wukong and oriana makes sense as a composition but the issue was that in lane it just there was no way to get these champions online through the lane phase you have this lee sin pick but what does he actually do for you he doesn't outperform a trundle maybe in the 1v1 but not in what he provides to his laners and it had to come down to it non-stop invading into the trundle jungle to try and punish the trundle pick but you have three losing lanes how do you do that yeah it's three losing lanes does mean that you are going to have an excessively hard time so we'll have to see if they can make it happen in game number two again reprise esports down 0-1 in the series with msg summon squad looking to try and close it out with a 2-0 don't go anywhere we'll be right back with game number two between these two awesome squads Seems to follow like a shadow, dark and cold to the touch. Am I insane not to let go? Oh, go on, just do what you do.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game number two between MSU Summer Squad and Reprise Esports. Again, both these squads still battling to ensure that they have a chance at making it into the playoff section. Uh, and again, this is week five, two more weeks left on this season, so every game counts. Yeah, and MSU, they are three and one as of this moment and looking really good to make it four and one as that was a pretty clinical game number one out of them. Sure, they had the hiccups in the fact that they had Dragon stolen away uh, <laughs> twice. Yeah, that feels bad. That, that uh, you, you know, Forgivable is like kicking himself. It was, you know, a very minor thing to steal the Baron back. Still yeah. losing two Dragons, definitely telling that, you know, it might be a little tense situation. Yeah, um... Losing two dragons like that definitely hurts quite a bit. They could have just had soul uh, because they did secure two for themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they had soul dragon, they they just would have clean wiped five minutes earlier. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it did slow the game down quite a bit. But never fear. uh, The 300 CS Sivir is here along with <laughs> a th- I think it was 350 CS Victor. So the amount of damage they were packing in that late game, in those two late game insurance policies, was massive. Yeah, and, and now looking towards game number two, we are talking about how Reprise Esports kind of drafted three losing lanes and uh, MSG Summer Squad really took advantage of that. So where do you think that they're going to change up the rosters? I mean, where do you think they're going to shift their power to try and give themselves an advantage in the early game? Uh, it's, I mean, they definitely had the option of picking the Syndra in that mid lane, which I think would have provided a lot more power. Being able to wave clear early in comparison to Orianna, yet also have the ability to disengage uh, and a lot more flexibility in her combos now would that have made enough of a difference in that game i'm not super sure because of how large and in charge that darius was so even if you throw down uh syndra ultimate i don't think it would have done much uh to that darius yeah i'm definitely understanding that as we are into the pick and man phase here game number one we already see what looks to be pretty much the exact same bands coming through, Senna and Ezreal, uh, on the side of MSU Summer Squad. However, on the flip side, we do see the Canarina still, uh, you know, giving great respect over the best Canarina CN. Yeah. But the Olaf ban this time is a little bit interesting, right? Reprise Esports, they aren't banning anything of the power picks from last game, instead opting to take away the Olaf, which wasn't even touched. Yeah, and I mean, at the same time, Olaf is one of those champions that has a great early game, but drops off very heavily come mid to late game if he doesn't get two to three kills uh, in the lane phase. And Varus will be that last ban for Reprise, which means Forgivable gets Graves. And (laughs) I mean, he was basically on sort of farm duty in the early game with the trundle pick this is pretty much similar but even better because he just scales out of control yeah that's a that's a scary pick considering you saw that they were up and at him but again you know he missed a couple smites so they might be feeling a little bit cheeky and and they are they pick up the trundle for themselves they say all right we get the uh master of trolling in here so trundle versus graves in the jungle once again and we're looking now to see if the adc picks are going to be coming through here and no it's actually the cinder so like you said getting themselves a little bit of an early game advantage yeah i'm very surprised to see the fact that syndra did just go through the entire draft phase last game without getting picked but immediately we see the adaptation come from Reprise. They have a lot more lane presence here with the Syndra and with the Trundle. And I'm looking for Reprise to really just run around to each of these lanes on this Trundle pick, throw down uh, that pillar to try and burn flashes and just be on nonstop gank duty because that's basically how this Trundle Graves matchup works because the Graves will indeed uh, outscale you 
pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And we actually do see the Diana locked in, so that's going to be okay. a somewhat hard counter against the Syndra. Nautilus locked in for the bottom lane, so not even worrying about the ADC. Focus primarily on getting the CC, getting their front line ready, and I think MSU Summer Squad definitely hit it on the head. Yeah, and I'm very intrigued by the fact that they did go for that early Nautilus pick. Uh, when there were champions like his namesake, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the Thrash available, and also just being able to pick a certain enchanter supports and leave that more for the second phase to try to counter pick, uh, perhaps, if Reprise decided to opt for um, something like a Tom Kench again. But we are going to hit second phase with three ADC bands in the first phase. We'll see how many of them end up getting cut here and now and see what what our champ pool is going to look like for that bottom lane all right well yeah but there we see the darius <laughs> ban no one's gonna play this champion uh so that is banned away msu summer squad though also ban out the yumi so not allowing uh hubba hubba or not allowing um hubba hubba to actually pick that up or the side of reprise esports they say okay it's a little bit too powerful to leave up to the likes so we'll have to see what else they ban away i mean again adcs yes they were targeted first round but i mean this time it looks like they're being left alone yeah and actually it will be the thresh being banned out trying to take away some of that uh, safety net for the syndra and whatever ad carry they decide to lock in and right now uh for msu um i'm looking at a Kaisa lock-in because it has been played four times uh, by Panda um, or wait it's not Panda uh, by Puffy um, <laughs> so it's definitely a possibility here as it blo wow okay. okay so it looks like it's a mid lane casted in in the Syndra in the bottom lane so knowing that there have been so many AD carries taken away they've decided alright we'll just uh, opt out of it or or it could be an Orn in the support pick because they have played it as support before yeah that would be very interesting to see and and again even though Syndra is very strong there are ways to work around it depending on what you match her with you can easily hamper mm -hmm. or uh, drastically increase her laning potential so we'll have to see if they pair it correctly again Garen being locked in here for the top lane so no matter what someone is getting the actual Demacian Justice, not the Noxian Guillotine, so we'll have to see how that works. Um, but now, finally looking for either an ADC or a bottom lane carry. And again, it does look like they are going to go for the ADC. Misfortune locked in with that Nautilus bot lane. So, it's a interesting draft from MSU. Um, but the Garen's definitely much more about just winning this top lane as Camille locked in means that it will indeed be an Orn or Trundle support. That could still be an option here. Uh, and Camille being sent up into the top lane to deal with the Garen. So um, the Garen, again, definitely wins this matchup. However, the Camille will at some point outscale. Whereas in the Wukong, Darius matchup, the Wukong, once he falls behind, will always stay behind the Darius. At least in this matchup, Camille has some outscale potential. Yes, it will, and we'll have to see if they can make it happen again. This was a Camille that was banned away last time, so this mm -hmm. is going to be a drastically different bottom lane, a drastically different top lane for uh, Reprise Esports, and it really feels like they flipped everything on its head. They went almost pure early game with Cassidy to round out that late game potential and try and, you know, scale up in that mid lane. Yeah, and Reprise, they they looked at their last game composition and decided <laughs> that uh, the way to solve this problem is to just go full late game. We were lacking late game damage, we'll go that as well. However, the issue is they don't have a whole lot of team fights um physical damage the only physical damage they have is going to be that camille other than that it is 
heavily magic damage with the Orn, with the Syndra, with the Kassadin. So mm -hmm. I do have a little bit of concerns as far as if MSU just hard stack magic resistance, that could just stop Reprise right in their tracks. And if Garen wins lane as I expect it should, then you're not having a whole lot of physical damage until Camille hits that like 30, 35 minute break point where she will have enough AD. Yeah, that top lane, once again, Sunlight had run train on that top side with the Darius. And so this time around, he will be trying to do it with the Garen. And so we'll really have to keep eyes on that. Again, Nick Nick's on a, on a champion that he probably feels a lot more comfortable with. We'll have to see if Eternix is able to actually set the pressure down. Because last time also, remember, Forgivable and Eternix were really not seen uh, through a lot mm -hmm. of the early stages. But now they have multiple lanes that all kind of require the jungle presence, right? They require jungle pressure to be able to scale forward and really take a hold of the game. So, I mean, do you see Forgivable and Eternix really duking it out? Or do you see them, like, putting a lot more pressure down? Or do you think we're going to see that kind of snooze fest early game like we saw in game number one? For Forgivable, I expect to see a lot of the same because he has the ability to just scale. He knows that. The composition he has has a pretty solid win lane uh, abilities and the fact that you have MF, Nautilus, a high kill potential lane. And then you also have the Garen up in the top side. Now this mid lane is really interesting because the Kastin should be able to deal with the Diana just fine. But it would be very interesting for the side of MSU if they instead threw a curveball and put the Garen into the mid lane or just to chase around the Cassidy and have Diana farm it out against the Camille. Oh, that would be that would be tricky. That I feel would not only be rude, but it'd be very, very tricky to play um, against Reprise Esports, who had definitely drafted this with a certain standard in mind. So, you know, we'll have to see if that comes uh comes to truth but last but not least i want to get your opinion on this bottom lane as we go into the last few seconds i mean again misfortune and nautilus versus orn and syndra we were saying you know syndra does need that help in the bottom lane does need to be able to put a lot of pressure down is orn the proper choice against the likes of a misfortune nautilus uh the orn is going to be able to scale pretty solidly here um just because of the fact that it is a melee matchup, it's not a heavy abuse lane. Um, and co combining his CC with the Syndra should be pretty easy to do. Uh, the only issue is Orn support isn't that good anymore because of the fact that they increase the threshold on getting access to those Orn items. So I don't know if the Orn items will actually ever kick in this game. <laughs> um, but that'll be something to watch. Yeah, that's so true. And I mean, looking down the line, uh, I want to get your opinion here. Last but not least, looking at these lines, we do see the AP heavy composition coming out of Reprise Esports. I mean, do you think this is a fairly easier composition to, uh, to take off with? Or do you think they're going to still have the same issues that we saw in game number one getting off the ground? I think they'll have a better time uh, than game one. I don't know if it will be enough. Um, the Kassin and pick is really good, providing them that big late game damage. Um, but the mid game just hits so hard from the side of MSU with the MF, Diana, Graves, and Garen that uh, the Kassin just has to be gifted a couple of kills to actually be able to contest this mid game for his team. All right, well, we'll have to see if that comes true. But before we go into a break, I do want to talk about one of our fantastic sponsors, Kono. If you're looking to take your game to the next level, it all starts with your peripherals. From keyboards to keycaps, mice, and more, our friends at Kono have got you covered. Kono works with the world's best designers, inventors, and makers to bring you some of the best gaming peripherals around. They've been huge supporters of us here at Upsearch and have made generous contributions to our prize pools. So if you're looking for anything like a new keyboard, for instance, you can always check out some of the gear like Hex Gears, X1 RGB, Low Profile, Bluetooth, Mechanical Keyboard. You can use discount code UPSEARCHGG for 7% off your first order. For more information, head over to Kono.store to check out all they have to offer. 
Now, with that, we will be getting into the last few seconds of the Spectator delay, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game number one, or game number two, very sorry, between Reprise Esports and MSU Summer Squad. There's a new music streaming app made by YouTube. It has a powerful search engine that finds songs with just a few lyrics. Yep, even that song. Download the YouTube music app today and get a trial of music premium on us. Restrictions apply. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for game number two between these two awesome teams. Again, this could be it for this week for these two squads. Again, a win here for MSU Summer Squad. Boost them up to four and one. And then, you know, a win for the side of Reprise Esports keeps them in the running for that playoff position. Yeah, and you, you nailed it. Where uh, for Reprise, it's about staying in contention to make into playoffs, whereas for MSU, it really solidifies themselves as one of the front runners in this group, uh, this cloud group, putting themselves at four and one. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this early game plays out because we have a lot more expectations from a Turnix and the fact that he's able to actually get things rolling with the lanes he's being provided he has the cc in the bot lane and he also has the cc in the top lane however sunlight on this garen has an ignite summoner so the possibility of trading one for one is definitely there yeah it's always scary to hear you know hear a garen come out and just be like all right i'm just gonna destroy you zero zero chance of anything yeah, uh, and oh, it is. Okay. Oh, you did call it. You did call it. So they did lane swap it up. Yeah, and this is an absolutely abysmal matchup for Palatopus because of the fact that his Q gives him no benefits besides actually getting the last hit. He will take full damage in this matchup, and it's just one of the classic counters to the Cassidy is just put an AD champion in that mid lane. He just cannot farm. 
Wow. Oh, that's that's gotta feel painful, right? As an as a mid laner, you're just sitting there like I I don't want to deal with this. I don't yeah. want to deal with a Garen. This is this is awful. This is terrible. Uh, do you see a little bit of a fight on the bottom lane? Hubba Hubba taking a little bit of damage, and again, that's what you do as a bottom lane ADC support duo. You pressure once you hit level two, and they do get some nice damage down on Hubba Hubba, who has to burn one of his potions. Another hook goes, and even more damage goes out, but they get oh, the knockout oh. and the stun. The heal comes out. Puffy Warrior does try to flash away, but the double flash follows, and that's going to be a first blood for Project Panda and Hubba Hubba in that bottom lane. Yeah, and that's one, going to be one of the big things in this bottom lane is the fact that uh, MF just doesn't play the same as regular AD carries and that she has a pretty long, winded, uh, oh, oh, well, yep. some solid CC there, but no kill to come out of it. She has a long, winded auto and um, attack speed, and that allows you at this point in the game with the Syndra Orn combination to just throw down all your spells and being more spell based, you just do more damage than the MF right now. Yeah, that is why Syndra is so top tier in that bottom lane. You know, it's one of the uh, one of the painful things to always play against. Yeah, so. and it, it's probably one of the best <laughs> mage bot lanes as mm -hmm. well because of the fact that you have such high spikes in power. Um, but yeah. a little bit of a gank in the mid lane and you know these things happen with that cast in the mid so already we're seeing those power spikes hit for each individual lane bottom lane it was project panda getting that early kill and now in the mid lane sunlight very happy uh, i do believe he actually has kill potential now if he can get off a good spell reel with that ignite yeah, he definitely can just flash in and go for that top lane or oh. mid lane. Very okay. nice dodge on the hook there. That would have been his death. And honestly, if that were old Nautilus hook, I think that would have been a kill. Uh, you know, <laughs> that would have that would have definitely snagged Cassin in there. Yeah, it would have uh, bent in a couple directions, go around the minion wave, uh, maybe maybe do a full ring around the rosy, and then hit him. So, uh, that, that's just uh, Nautilus, old Nautilus in the nutshell. Uh, he, oh he's going God. behind tower. He really doesn't want him to farm this way. I, I mean, I can understand that too. You don't want to let a casting get up close. You don't want to cast it in to get any sort of farm oh that's going to help him win. But now we see... Bottom lane here, Trundle coming into play on this bottom side. Pillar able to section off Death Sentence, but again, he has Flash, he also has the hook, and he's gonna keep himself very, very safe. Yeah, in that lane, you just, it's so hard to punish the Nautilus. Uh, you have to really cut him off with the terrain, prevent him from hooking out, but you can catch the MF. Uh, so that has to just be the targets whenever you're looking for that gank in the bottom side. And really, it just comes down to Puffy Warrior. As long as he hugs towards the bottom half of that lane, he shouldn't really have too many issues and have a lot more warning to just walk out. Yeah, that is the hope. We do see the first dragon on the board is that Mountain Drake. So no Mountain Soul this time. Hopefully we get a little bit more exciting dragons coming up as we do see Puffy Warrior once uh, again getting caught out. He has no flash and the stun is there to CC it down. They gifted over to Project Panda as he is now sitting on two kills. Yeah, and remember when I mentioned that he has to hug the bottom side of the lane? Being in river is not the bottom side of the lane. Uh, that, <laughs> that's definitely a lot farther upwards uh, than he should have been and he does get rightfully punished. And going for that ward clear at that point, knowing that Trundle just visited your bottom lane is just not a, not a smart move. But Sunlight, you know, he's just having the time of his life. Has a 22 CS lead uh, against the Kastadin. Um, but Kastadin was able to hit level 6. Yeah, finally able to, but the threat is still there. Again, any Garen is a scary Garen if you really don't have any hard CC and a lot of prolonged damage. So we'll have to see how that one plays out and if he's able to make it work. And again, now we have to shift our focus to that bottom lane, right? Uh, we are wondering if this bottom lane will be able to get off uh, the ground. And 
it definitely has with this power and puffy warrior now last time again he was a high priority uh you know utility uh utility adc that was able to help his team closing gaps now he's on this this misfortune who is drastically further behind i mean does this spell trouble for the side of msg so much fun yeah the project panda being able to get two kills to his name is really important for the squad because without that they really have no mid game you look at their mid game composition they have a, a cassidy who is definitely not a mid-game champion. And then you have a Camille, who also is definitely not a mid-game champion. Uh, so, without the Syndra getting two kills, it really would have been a difficult task to try and find these mid-game teamfights to win against the likes of Garen, Graves, uh, and MF. But, with that said, uh, Project Panda being so far ahead, once he hits his Ludens, that's when he's going to be a very scary threat. Unfortunately for him, he, he's not going to be able to necessarily just delete this Garen because Garen is just... He's a little bit out of control. Even with the poor uh, skill uh, skill allocations. Oh, oh, here we go. Top lane. Best Katarina does get a two-man knockup or two-man pull on the ultimate. Not enough to Keep him alive though, so another nice gank coming out for a Turnix. Yeah, and now you're starting to possibly run into a couple of issues in the fact that you have um, your Diana on the side lane, the Camille should be able to deal just fine with her passive uh, and the gank potential in this top side is definitely there. It's Thankfully, Best Katarina did save and hold on to that flash. So we'll have a tool to escape uh, if the gank again revisits that top side. Um, but it, it is a bit of a concern. Yeah, that's always that's always a very big concern for any team, really. Like you know, you have that situation crop up, and you're just like, uh, do I really want to deal with that right now? Not <laughs> <Yeah>. really. <laughs> it's just like. Uh, you don't want to be in that spot, and if you are, then you know you're already on the back foot. So, again, we do see this top lane being the target of aggression right now, keeping best Katarina CN down, making sure that he is not able to pressure anywhere excessively, and allowing the Camille, it looks like, to start roaming a bit. Yeah, Camille's going to be slightly unlocked here. At least the Graves was in the area to make sure that the dive didn't happen onto that uh diana pick but with how the build path is going for nick nix there's actually a decent chance for katarina or uh diana to actually win at one item so the nasher's tooth will do more damage than the blade of the rune king in a full all-in 1v1. It just comes down to uh, the skills, uh, how they end up hitting, if they end up hitting all their skills. Uh, so that's going to be one of the key points here. But uh, in this mid lane, things still going well for the Garen. As we see top lane, a lot of fighting going down, Whoa. and that's just a straight up solo kill. Nick Nick just taking it to town right now. 1-0-1 one, one on this Camille, and now we're seeing why it was banned out in game number one. Yep, the Camille's just, uh, his best champion is his most played in solo queue, uh, and it, he's really showing that comfort level right here. On the flip side, uh, I, I do have to be a little bit critical of Sunlight as he Ooh. does get the flash out. Uh, Hubba Hubba... Uh, there's a few issues coming down in this mid lane. Oh! That's the Ornhorn miss. That's going to be a kill for Sunlight. As the Dead Star does go out, our Turnix is going to be on the front side, but that's going to be Scatter the Weak and Unleash Power, allowing for a Sunlight to oh, get a double it. kill. There it is. That's going to be the Wait kill coming around. Double kill for Project Panda. 4-0 for oh. this monster of the bottom lane. Huh? Nick Nick getting bursted, and Puffy Warrior is able to collect a kill for himself. So big wins across the board. And I would say an overall net victory, three for two 
and Dragon in favor of MSU Summer Squad. Uh, yeah, Nick Nicks going for the big play there. You, buddy, you only completed your first item. Uh, you're not team fight ready, especially with the Blade of Rune King that provides you no other stats besides 1v1 stats. Uh, I mean, it, it's just another case of Camille Syndrome, where you, you feel large and in charge in the 1v1, but then you immediately come for team fights and you have no actual stats to pull off a front to back team fight. Yeah, amazingly, you know, gambles going on here. And again, the scat of the week we saw coming out of Project Panda definitely holds some power, but yeah, giving some power back to this MSU Summer Squad, I mean, keep in mind, three to six kills and first blood did go over to the side of uh, uh, Reprise Esports. It's still only 500 gold difference. That just shows how much stronger the laning phase has been for the side of MSU Summer Squad, I feel. Yeah, uh, definitely a test to their lane prowess here, especially with how the strat has been going. Uh, but Nick Nick's. Um, yeah, Nick Nick finding a very nice little mini fight as Hook goes out, does miss. That is going to be three plates taken in that mid lane as Wait. in goes Best Katarina gets the pull down. It's trapped. That's going to be a follow up here. Nick Nick almost going down. Collateral damage misses. But that does leave a Turnix all on his own. And the Hunters have become the Hunted as Death Sentence leaves his mark. And Nick Nick just says, nope. He just <laughs> nopes out of there. Uh, he uses the hookshot, gets himself over the wall, and leaves his trundle behind and uh that's a play that they themselves pulled the trigger on and it just doesn't they just don't have enough damage to instantly burst out the diana and uh th things slowly still turning out in favor oh okay. here we go nick nick uh, getting oh no. a good jump but that's gonna be a flash out okay as forgivable is able to dance his way out thanks to a really well-timed flash so thankfully he is alive for the side of msu summer squad but we're starting to see uh this game's definitely a lot closer in my opinion the game number one yeah but a, a pretty clean escape uh from that Graves on uh, Forgivable, and they are able to finally break that mid tower. So uh, that is definitely a big positive for the side of MSU, just being able to crack that and then be able to get access to all this extra uh, jungle for the Graves is going to be very important here. And it looks like they know something is up. They, they sense it. <laughs> they smell it. They know, they can smell the smelly smell of a troll that's been rolling in the garbage for too long. Uh, that is a Turnix <laughs> dancing in that side bush. and I mean, they're holding well, so Death Sentence oh, might be no. on the end of this, but they are calling Graves down, and that's going to be the call, and that might be the stun miss as the flash outs. And again, lots of time wasted by a Turnix for nothing in return. They get nothing in return, but... Uh, the side of MSU, they could look for this play with their own graves, but uh, with them channeling those backs, it should just be the reset. And the Syndra finally able to hit that loot in Echo is again that big power spike, especially with the uh, Sork boots along with this needlessly large rod. So the Syndra is their win condition right now because of the fact that the Cassidy's just a little bit too far from scaling at the moment as we see a fight break out now. Yeah, that's gonna be um, Hava gets pulled in. And there it is, the shotgun to finish it all. As you see a flash all the way in, or teleport, sorry. And the jump in Cassidy having to flash away from that fight. Sunlight being chunked out a little bit by the orbs of um, of Syndra, and they get away with one clean kill. Yeah, it's just going to be one clean kill for the side of MSU, and once again, they trade up 
once they were able to cash in all their gold, they hit this mid game. Uh, for the side of Reprise, they keep opting for these fights. Oh, this fight is not going to be good. Artinix is able to get over the wall, but the Death Charge always follows. Sunlight dancing it further is going to get the silence down as he is going to try, but the heal comes out. Project Panda might get it oh. the bullet time, calls it. Very well played, but here we go on the flip side. Platypus might get the kills. They jump all the way up, but they just slice him up. Haba Haba goes from death screen to death screen and down goes Platypus as well. This is a slaughter coming out of the side of MSU Summer Squad. And there is collateral damage collected as well. And Nick Nick, the last one surviving on 10 health. This game has exploded to MSU Summer Squad taking the reins forcefully away and from Reprise Esports. And it's an absolute tragedy. Uh, I was just about to say, this squad, again, the only mid-game carry they have right now is this Syndra pick. Everyone else just needs more time. And, and for the side of Reprise, they just say, Now's the, now is the time. Uh, you see them, well, I mean, it wasn't them to call that play because they did just get caught out. Uh, as far as the fight starts with them getting caught out. But they continued the fight afterwards, which is the really baffling part. And uh, when you're casted in who only has three stacks on his Rod of Ages, well, at the time, uh, goes and tries to turn the fight by himself, you know it, things are very dire. Uh, the casted in does not do anything at this time. He should not be looking for fights. He should be looking for side lane. Just get as much farm as he can. He needs to line up against this Diana pick. Yeah, and and not only that, remember, this is a Cassidy that went fleet footwork, right? This is not a Cassidy that went conquer who can stack up the conquer's stacks and then be able to duel just about anyone, right? This is a Cassidy that very much is just trying to hold on to some semblance of a laning phase, trying to get that farm. I mean, he's down to the Garen 20 CS. He only just finished the Rod of Ages, still stacking that one up. And so he is so far behind as Art, uh, Aternix is able to get his red, but here we go, oh. Stun comes out, and they found Forgivable, as he is killed on the spot, shutdown going over to Project Panda. And that's a little bit, uh, should I say, unforgivable there, of <laughs> uh, being hey. so deep uh, in the enemy jungle, without any supports coming in from his laners, they didn't have control of that mid lane, there is no business for him to be that far up there and it's a different uh matter if you're talking about well okay he invades spot side well he currently has a garen in that side uh <laughs> if a garen decides to walk in he actually can just like they can 2v4 that matchup but going top side is is not the answer yeah, that's going to be a little difficult to see what occurs here, and I can't wait to see the development, because again, this game pretty much flipped on its head in less than I think about a minute. It went from uh, Reprise Esports being on top for a majority of the time, all of a sudden to just, you know, falling behind. They're lagging behind now about 3k down, about 3.2k down, and they've lost the reins. I mean, just like two poor team fights, and all of a sudden, it seems like all their hard work at the beginning of this game have gone down the, gone down the drain. Yeah, and can you really say they were team fights? Uh, that last one, especially, was just not even a contest where they just misposition themselves. They get caught out, and even after getting caught out, they say, "All right, we we have to win this fight," even though they definitely do not need to win fights right now this is the mid game power spike for msu you just have to make it out through this mid game and get the cassadin online get the camille online they, oh, after they hit those two items then you're looking to be able to turn fights because the garen starts slowing down at three items the mf starts slowing down a little bit at three items as well and you only get better with the Kassin and Camille, especially in the side lanes. Yeah, 
we'll see if they can reach that point again dragon coming up this will be the fourth dragon of the game that is going to be uh air soul on the table and again a lot of cdr champions that will love to have that you know 20 30 percent cdr mm -hmm. and really be able to spam the ultimates as you do see a fine depth chart does go out and they burn the flash once again platypus being chased wherever he goes losing his summoners on cooldown it feels yeah and it's really baffling to see that platypus didn't opt for an early arm guard didn't opt for early ninja tappy instead he opted for this merc treads to try and reduce the amount of cc being applied by nobody oh boy here we go that is going to be the rip tail drops i believe as well in that bottom lane and so they're going to try and press for another tower dragon is up in about five seconds so they're going to close in on that so putting down the pressure is always a smart idea i feel and that's actually going to be a fight and that's just going to the kill sunlight gave Zero, zero cares about that fight and just deletes Captain That's... off the map. Might have to run away now though. This might be it. Stun comes out on the other side of the map as you can see. They're gonna keep chasing. Hook goes out, they land it, and that's gonna be the pull in as well. Hubba hubba has to keep running away, does jump over to the support, and there's a collateral damage to finish it off. Three dragons in the pocket of MSG Summer Squad, and I mean this game is all but theirs as they are in control of just about every aspect of this game. I'm a, I'm very confused about that re-engage coming in from the bottom side. Trying to get the kill onto a Garen when you only have uh, the Orn and the Trundle. At this point, those two champions definitely cannot kill a uh, 3-1 in 6 Garen. It's just not possible. Sure, you have Project Panda trying to slowly make his way over, but you know that they already took Dragon. There could just be an additional three people hiding around the corner, and that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so with that third Dragon secured, they are now on to soul points. Now, is the move speed buff good for this roster? Not really, but having 30% alt cooldown means that Sunlight can just kill someone pretty much every two waves. Yeah, they definitely can as we see the Baron started up by the side of MSU Summer Squad. However, they are getting pinched. That's going to be a teleport coming teleport? in from Camille. This might be big as they do kill off and they're going to chase a little bit. They drew the summoner spell like they wanted. And that doesn't just mean a they free have win. one out in that summoner spell contest. So again, Baron baited very, very well by the side of MSU. Yep, and for MSU, it, they just take what's given to them for free, and they're fine with just taking the bare minimum right now. Uh, they're going to revisit this Baron to see if they can clear out the vision to maybe start it up again. Um, and now oh we man. see another fight. Nick Nick just barely getting away from that hook as the Unleashed Power does almost nothing. Scout of the Week actually lands and keeps everyone away. But again, no kills come about. Sunlight just too tanky. Yeah, and remember when I talked about uh, right after, oh, okay, all right, they want it. Yeah, Call of Forge does go out and they're able to get it, but the oh. charge is there in the oh. Wombo combo. That's gonna be a massive win. Bullet Storm Woo. to be able to close it out. Bullet time, I'm very sorry. And what looked like a deafening loss on the side of MSU, Summer Squad, turn it around in a pool party fashion for a quick 4 for 1. Yeah, it, it just comes down to the fact that the side of Reprise just don't have any damage. You look at the item builds. Best Katarina Sien, she has that Zhonya's Hourglass that allows her to just jump into that fight, initiate the fight for her team, and then pop uh, the Hourglass to Make sure she lives an extra couple of seconds to buy extra time for the rest of the team. And then you look at the rest of the item builds. Merc Tread's Spirit Visage on Graves. Merc Tread's Adaptive Helm onto the Garen. And then also you have the Stone Plate being built up onto the Nautilus as a triple magic damage composition. How do you actually kill the members on MSU. 
Uh, you don't. You pray that they walk into tower fire and take about 10 shots. That's all you got. That is literally your game plan. However, another game plan is to jump on Sunlight, who does not have any flash. He is alone, but he just goes right in. Very nice cancel, but it's not enough. Hextech you ultimatum doesn't change this. He is now going to fight this out. He does not have enough. That is going to be the kill. Subjugate was enough from the trundle, but again, that leaves a massive opening in the mid lane. They take a one for one trade and a tower. Massive win once again for this spot. As we see a jump in, Platypus now getting jumped on and has to rift walk out. I mean, they got one kill, but what's it worth at the end of it? Well, they were at least able to kill the Garen, so you know, that's a moral victory, Orbital. <laughs> uh, and, and at this point in the game, you need every moral victory you can get. Because again, I mentioned, this is a support Orn. We don't know if he'll ever get to those support items. He's three levels away. He only items. needs three more. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he needs two more levels to get that forge fire cape but then he needs a full nother level to actually be able to start donating items to his team and it's super important to do so because there is a triforce available to be upgraded there is a death cap available to be upgraded um like it's not out of the realm of possibility for them to win but yeah, that's going to be the jump in from the side of Reprise Esports. They want to go in because they knew uh, that they didn't have a member. This is a four on five flash away. Death Star does go out, catches the take his member. Oh that's going to be a wombo God. combo to start it up and the cleave to catch it. Double kill coming out for Best Katarina at CN. And that's going to be a follow up. Collateral damage, not getting the kill, but Forgivable is going to be stunned out. There it is, though. <laughs> the gas canister and smoke screen to finish it off. Four for zero easily as a flash out once again from platypus as he's trying to get away from the jungler forgivable chasing him hunting. down and that is again a four for zero win msu summer squad putting on a show for us and that's just going to be that uh you saw a great early game coming out from reprise but then they just completely flubbed up the mid game and uh the side of msu fully capitalize off of those mistakes and they just win this series 2-0 yeah fantastic job coming out of msu summer squad and i mean these guys again game two may have been a scare but past that early stage i mean they were clean through and through uh, and i and i feel it goes all the way back to that early game the draft phase right they drafted fairly standard compositions and you know, again, I do like Reprise uh, Esports for trying something else new, but again, double AP in your primary lanes just didn't seem to cut it. Yeah, and it would have been a different matter if they decided to run something like a uh, arranged AB t AD top lane like the Callista, or maybe even a Vayne just to provide that um, mid-game damage in the AD role, but with the Camille, you're waiting a little bit too long. And it really just came down to a Turnix had to do a whole lot more in these lane phases than what Forgivable needed to do. And he just wasn't able to deliver on those conditions. Yeah, and then looking towards that, you know, that mid game for each game, honestly, I mean, it seemed that MSU Summer Squad, there was like a flip that was switched. Right, they just took off in terms of how they played the team fights, how they rooted it out. I mean, it seemed to send uh, Reprise Esports kind of scrambling for the hills. And I mean, do you expect them to play this level of clean uh, gameplay for the foreseeable future? Um, I mean, MSU—they've already hit four and one, so you know they've already shown pretty solid consistency and being able to find wins. And I think that they should be able to continue with that style to make it out of this group stage into playoffs. So I fully expect him to see them come a bracket time. And uh, for a reprise, it really just it comes to trying to take the next step forward as a team, try and fix some of those team issues um, as they move forward here.
All right, and last question for you as we wrap it up here on the desk. I do want to get your opinion looking at these two games. I mean, we have to pick an MVP. Who is your MVP for this series from the side of MSU Summer Squad? Uh, I think it has to be one of the Soul Laners. Best Katarina, China, had a fantastic game one with the victor pick, but had a highlight reel in game two. So I would put him as my first pick. And then Sunlight does get a pretty solid mention because of his lane dominance um, and being able to execute on those conditions, but also didn't have the flashy plays that uh, Katarina did. All right. Well, there you go. MVP going out to them. So congratulations once again to MSU Summer Squad for taking the 2-0 victory. We'll have to see if they can continue on, and we'll have to see if Reprise Esports are able to pick themselves up into these next two weeks. Uh, that will be it from us here for the Upsurge Contenders League this week. But remember, we do have more action coming to you tomorrow as well. So tomorrow at 8 p.m. EST, we will have the Upsurge Minor League coming at you with Super Athletic Dads versus Ignitus uh, Ignitus Esports, so you don't want to miss that. Now, from all of us here at the casting desk, as well as production, my name is Orville. I was joined here by Nightstar. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a fantastic evening.
Thank you.